Well, we have here a clip of Simone Biles winning the national championships for gymnastics. Uh, we're going to be interested in tracking her motion through this maneuver known as the Biles. Um, I've gone ahead and set up a reference point here in Tracker. Tracker is able to uh, examine her velocity, her rotational speed, etc. if we can give it a nice fixed reference frame. So what you'll see is that this green dot is going to follow the little blue dot in the gymnastics logo there. It only gets covered up once, so there's probably going to be one little spot that might not be entirely accurate. But what Tracker is able to do with that is set up a reference frame that uh, accounts for the camera's motion. So what you see down here in the world view is the frame moving around to keep the background consistent. So whereas up here, the camera is moving around, this bottom view here uh, corrects for the camera view. So if I press play again, we can watch one on the bottom. You can see that the view is moving around. So the folks in the background are staying at a consistent place. So if you were there, this is what you would have seen uh, apart from the, you know, the, the camera moving, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the way we're going to track her movement is uh, she is obviously behaving like an extended object here, not a point particle. So we're going to attach four markers. We're going to attach markers to her right foot, her left foot, her right hand, and her left hand. Uh, and so I'm going to go through and I'm going to track each of those. I, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to do this automatically. So we're going to put in a time lapse here of me uh, clicking on each of her feet and hands here. Uh, I'd better figure out which is her right and which is her left. Um, let's see. So if she's facing that way, this is my horrific impersonation of a gymnast here. She's facing that way. That makes this blur up here, her right foot. So let's start with the right foot there. And I do have to keep track of her right foot and her left foot separately because they do separate at the end here, <laughs> right? Uh, so her left foot kicks back that way. So now let's go back and do the same thing for her left foot. I should just be able to follow the traces for the right foot for the most part. All right, now the feet are starting to separate. Okay, good. I did keep left and right separate. This is where she goes to literally stop herself at this point. And so she's kicking her left foot back this way. There we go. Okay, so if I look at her feet now, let's take a look at right foot and left foot. Ah, compare with, there we go. Right foot and left foot, there we go. Okay, so if I put these together, they basically follow each other. Let's do a trajectory of Y versus X, right? So they basically follow each other, right foot and left foot. Uh, they get a little bit separated here at the end because she's using that to create her twist there. So we're not actually able to analyze the twist here because Tracker can only see things in these two dimensions. It can't really see that three dimensional twist, but this is basically what it looks like when the twist uh, is going on here. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Let's try the hands now. Uh, okay, so this one here is gonna be her right hand. So let's, let's follow that. I, I literally see no hands. I don't even see a blur there. Oh, that was a pretty good guess. All right, now 
her face is that way. So if her face is that way, then this is her right hand. Is that her right hand or is that that guy's arm? I think it's that guy's arm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's tucking her arms in here. Changing her moment of inertia. Cool. She's going that way. Now she's, her hand is he. Oh, okay. Her hands and her feet are all together there. That's kind of cool. You notice it's a lot easier to track when it's closer to the center because the center is not rotating as quickly as her extremities. Now we're going to see what her hands do to help stabilize herself at the end. There we go. All right, we got a hand in there now. So now if I go compare with right hand. Yeah, it's looking really cool now. <laughs> All right, let's go back and do the same thing now with left hand. All right, it's easiest to find them when they're on the ground. This is a really good example of how when something is rolling, uh, the bottom is stationary, right? Because her hands are stationary when she reaches the bottom there. Her legs are stationary when they reach the bottom there. That's her left side, okay. So now she's tucking her hands in, there we go together there there's a left hand all right there's a left hand should have asked her to wear a bracelet on one hand <laughs> or one wrist so that we could tell them apart uh yeah that's left hand there left hand there there we go okay now we've got all four pieces of data here so we're gonna go compare with Left foot, right hand, left hand, right foot. Uh, you know what? Those are actually difficult to tell apart. I think I do need to give these folks different colors. So let's go with a green. I'm going to give a dark green for the sake of the viewers. Um, and then the left hand, excuse me, and the right hand, I need to change that color uh, purple. Did that change these? That should have changed these. Might need to remove these, put them back on. Boom. All right, so there's the right foot and the left foot. Again, they follow each other pretty well. Uh, excuse me, this is actually the end point, isn't it? Because this is the end at the left, because she's moving to the left. So you notice they get separated here. Yeah, so here is where she's doing the tuck. Um, this is where she's got that last flip there. Uh, right hand. You notice that the hands and the feet kind of move in counterpoint with each other because when the hands at a minimum, the feet are at a max, feet are at a minimum, hands are at a max. And we'll put in the left hand here. It follows the right hand pretty well. They get separated over here. That's where she's doing the twist. So that's where all four limbs are operating independently to change her moment of inertia. So we've got a foot landing here, hand landing, foot landing. Uh, one of the things I like about Tracker is that when you go back and rewatch the video, you can follow the highlight along the trajectory. So if you follow the highlighted point here, you can see there's a landing. Then we go up and there's the next landing. And then we go up, there's the next landing. Then we go up and now we don't come back down till we're done with this twist. And you see the twist is really this mess in here, right? So the twist is the messiest part of the graft until she lands here and then she does uh, stabilizing over here. So this is what stabilizing look like. Now, one of the cool things that Tracker will do for you is it will assemble all four of those into a center of mass, right? I'm not going to attempt to track the center of her body somewhere, not even sure where that falls exactly physiologically. So what we're gonna do is just have those four points determine the center of mass for us because hands and feet about the same size, probably about the same mass. And so what I can do is create a new point called center of mass. 
Oh, there we go. And now I can select the two feet and the two hands. There we go. And now I can track where her center of mass goes. Uh, let's change the color of this to, how about a teal over here? I just need it to stand out compared to everything else. And then let's give that a little bit easier to follow footprint. How about a, we haven't done a triangle yet, so we'll do a solid triangle. Uh, can I change the size of that? I don't think I can. Okay, so now what it's doing is taking all four of those and it's averaging those four points together to form her center of mass. Now currently her center of mass not on her physical body because of the way she's uh, uh, contorting this, uh, contorting her legs over here. So why don't we click play and we'll follow that center of mass. And you can see the center of mass just keeps swirling around really there at the beginning. Yeah, really cool, really cool. Uh, let's see, let's get a look at the entire trajectory on the graphs. So we'll do Y versus X here. Cool, so this is what her center of mass looks like as a trajectory. Again, we're gonna read this from right to left. So we click play, there's one turn, there's the next turn. And then up here, this is the interesting part, right? So this is where she is gaining some momentum there. And then this is where she's using that momentum to launch up into the air. Really cool. Let's get an idea of how quickly she is moving. Uh, so instead of looking at the um, positions, let's look at the velocities. Let's go velocity magnitude versus time. Now this is going to be, a, a, I mean, obviously velocity is messy, right? Because it's always based on the, um, it's always based on two data points. So any error you had is getting compounded. But there's also the fact that if you, if you actually click through this, every other frame is frozen because um, it's just an artifact of how I was able to screen grab the video. So it's going to oscillate a bit more than it should. But if we pay attention to the general trend, uh, let's see how well she does in terms of her speed. She's getting up to a maximum of about eight meters per second, right? Her, if you notice, her center of mass is very rarely at rest, right? It's, it's, it gets close to zero down here. That's technically not zero yet over there. It's at like 0.64 meters per second. For reference, one meter per second is walking speed. So when she tops out at about eight and a quarter here, 8.37 up here, she's going 8.37 times a standard human walking speed, right? So that's pretty fast, right? Eight times, so eight times walking speed hurtling through the air there. Um, interestingly, her fastest point is not during the twist, right? So during the during the actual leap there at the end with the twist, she's she's got a nice consistent speed there of around uh, seven and a half meters per second, but her maximum is actually back over here somewhere. Uh, looks like, when, when does that maximum occur? That maximum occurs just as she's landing to do the twist, right? So this maximum here, let's go to just before that, that occurs just when she lands, because that's when she has picked up the most kinetic energy, hits the floor with that much kinetic energy, and is then able to rebound off to go sailing through the air there. And she gets about the same when she returns to the ground at the end. So think about going from this peak to this peak is how much speed she loses due to the collision with the ground and to air resistance. Another thing we might look at would be her angular speed. So let's take a look over here, omega, her angular velocity. So this is how fast that center of mass is spinning around. So we get up to, here we get up to a maximum of, let's see, this is in units of degrees, we have to multiply by 10 to the three. So she's getting up to a maximum of about 200 degrees per second. So that's nearly a full, so that's two thirds of a revolution in one second. Makes sense. Uh, here she's getting, she's going in the opposite direction. 
uh, let's see, and, and that's at about, oh goodness, what is that? So that's at about 16,000 degrees per second, which is kind of cool. Another way we could look at this, we could uh, compare with uh, her uh, extremities here, right foot, left foot, right hand, left hand, and you can kind of see how each of them is spinning throughout the, uh, throughout the maneuver here. So we get very high up here in the, which one is that? Which one is blue? Blue is the left hand. So the left hand is getting a high angular velocity there. Uh, and then the feet pick up their angular velocity after that, right? So again, they're going in counterpoint to each other. They have to go opposite of each other because they're on opposite sides uh, of our body there. And we really get the greatest angular speeds over here at the beginning. Another way we might evaluate this, uh, we would like to get an idea of how fast she is kind of spinning around herself. So what I could do, instead of having my coordinate system keyed off of the, uh, the, the reference point there, I could just make it a uh, reference off of the center of mass, right? So if I do that, if I make my coordinate system go off of center of mass there, then now when I go to look at her center of mass, uh, gosh, that's going to be quite messy there. Uh, let's take a look now instead. First, let's take a look at the trajectories around the center of mass. So let's go Y versus X here. This is what all four of those extremities are doing around the center of mass. So the center of mass measured from itself is always at zero, zero. And what you're seeing here in this bicycle wheel looking graph is all four is, is the two hands, the two feet, the four extremities going around that central point. So if we go back to the beginning, I can see that, uh, let's see, I would like to track her right foot particularly. Let's, let's just pick something to find where we start. So we're going to start out looks like up here. And so if you follow this thing around, you get an idea of where that extremity is in relation to the center of mass. And they basically spin around in a larger circle. And then suddenly they're all gonna collapse down to the smaller circle, that's where she tucks inward. And you notice that they're moving faster now, right? Because you move those extremities inward, you're gonna get a lower moment of inertia, you're gonna get higher angular velocity. Uh, same thing, let's take a look at her uh, angular velocity. Let's do that one versus time. Should do it first time? Yeah, 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 let's do it versus time. So we're gonna start at the beginning over here. There we go. And now let's watch her angular velocity as we go through. So you see, this is this is no longer them spinning about that reference point. This is now them spinning about the center of mass. So we're taking this center of mass motion and correct, correcting it. So this is basically what her body is feeling through this, that there's gonna be uh, some pretty good angular speed there at the beginning. And then as we go into the the actual, the biles here, this is where it starts to spike, right? This is where we get a whole lot more. And you notice they're also getting a lot uh, different from each other. So again, the red, the right foot uh, is kind of going opposite of uh, the purple, the right hand, right? Uh, and uh, same thing. So the, interestingly, the left hand here is going opposite of the right hand as we go into that. That's interesting. Uh, and then everything kind of settles down there. Let's take a look at one last thing. Interestingly, we have this high um, angular velocity, but if I look at regular velocity versus time, again, measured from the center of mass, I've actually got higher velocity back at the beginning so they, because they are farther away, right? Because they're farther away, they are moving faster on a linear scale, but as soon as we tuck in, right here going into the twist, she tucks in, that's gonna decrease the linear speed, but it's actually increasing the angular velocity like we saw earlier. So there's a physics analysis of uh, the Biles as performed by Simone Biles at the uh, Gymnastics National Championships. Uh, looking forward to seeing some more physics uh, from her and other gymnasts at the Olympics this year.